I'm sure many of you can relate to the situation I'm about to describe, particularly when it comes to school routings. That's all for the spring routings requirements. Any questions? Can we bring our phones? You'd better not. Then there will be sighs and groans. That student's question perfectly ruined my anticipation for the spring outing. It felt much worse than being informed in advance that phones are banned. Oh, God, why hadn't his deskmate covered his mouth before he could speak? I vividly remember a similar situation from my junior high days when my head teacher faced the same question. Instead of shutting it down immediately, she simply smiled and replied, don't ask me, and skipped over the topic. This subtle redirection effectively put an end to any further discussion on the matter. My head teacher's word inspired me. I realized that in such circumstances, asking can we bring our phones is actually meaningless. Bringing phones is reasonable to some extent, as many students are picked up by their parents and need phones for timely contact. But even if our teacher is on our side, he or she doesn't have the authority to change the rules. As a representative of the school, the safest way is to ban the phones, which leads to the frustrating scene at the beginning of my speech. When it comes to written rules, some believe anything not mentioned is forbidden, but some think anything not forbidden is allowed. Of course, I'm not promoting a letter or encouraging people to exploit the loopholes. But it is important to strike a balance between adhering to the rules and exercising a degree of flexibility when necessary. As history has proved time and again, blindly following the rules without considering the context can bring serious consequences. During the spring and autumn period in ancient China, a war for supremacy in the central plains broke out between the states of Song and Chu. At the Battle of Hongshui Lake, Duke Xiang of Song strictly adhered to the rules of Zhou rituals, refusing to attack the Chu army until they had fully deployed their formation. Given that the Chu army's scale was larger than Song's, Duke Xiang's advisor suggested they seize the moment when the Chu army was crossing the river or landing and attack the latter when the Chu soldiers were weakest. But Duke Xiang of Song still insisted on prioritizing the traditional values of honor over strategic optimism, which eventually led to Song's defeat. Apart from heavy losses of the army, even Duke Xiang himself died in the conflict. This cautionary tale serves as a reminder that in times of conflict and competition, it is essential to balance adherence to the rules with practical judgment. In modern times, the Apollo 11 mission provides a compelling example of the importance of flexibility in the face of unforeseen challenges. During the mission, Armstrong and his team encountered many unexpected situations, but they did not adhere strictly to the pre-formulated rules. For instance, before the separating of Module Ego and Command Module Columbia, there was remaining gas in the tunnel. Therefore, the spacecraft got an extra boost when separated. By the time Armstrong and his team realized the deflection, they had already overshot the landing site by four miles. As minutes to go down, there was only 30 seconds of fuel left due to the overshot. Armstrong ignored the reoccurring alarm and guided the spacecraft to softly touch down on a seemingly smooth area. Thanks to Armstrong's flexible response, the moon and the mission were successfully completed. Rules, by their very nature, are meant to guide our behavior and maintain order within a community. In our own lives, we encounter rules and regulations that may seem restrictive and burdensome at times. While it is important to respect and abide by the rules that govern our community, it is equally important to recognize when flexibility is warranted. Rules to serve as guidelines, not constraints, allow room for individual judgment and conscience to guide our actions. 
To take myself as an example, there was a Monday morning when I suddenly realized I had forgotten to wear my suit. The moment I saw my schoolmates, all dressed in a neat dark blue suit. And I was wearing the classic uniform of seen in high school. Leisurely, I walked into the classroom and borrowed the suit coat from my friend. So, my attire on the flag raising ceremony was like it's this. Yeah, looks strange, right? But as long as I was embarrassed, the embarrassed ones would only be other people. <laughs> and it's not such a serious matter that urgently needed my parents sending me my suit. My head teacher even laughed when she saw my ridiculous outfit. However, neither did I go to ask the great dean what he thought of my outfit, nor did I flaunt it around to show my escape from potential punishments. <laughs> uh, as in the case of the above, rules are still valid in most circumstances, but simply do not fit our current circumstance. Then it's the essence and original intention that we should focus on. On the premise of not violating other people's rights, it's totally fine to take along your phones during a school trip, to wear a strange combination of school uniforms, or to take a lollipop from the hospital's candy jar for kids. As long as you're really craving it and don't take the whole jar. <laughs> Nevertheless, rules are the product of human consensus of their time. The creators of rules are confined by time, and thus the rules are even more so. Rules are often intended by the creators to endure through time, but societies and circumstances change then there should be even more leniency regarding breaking some rules. When violating the rules is left as the only choice for the majority, rules are to be revised, not the majority to be disciplined. Together, the resultant force of people's mild resistance will push the rules and the system to refine themselves. Perhaps some may argue that being a majority doesn't make one's position right. To be fair, this is a very thought-provoking question. Endless compromise to the majority can be a betrayal of the ideal, but compromise is necessary. In fact, at the moment that society emerged, people yielded some of their freedom in order to live in peace. That's how rules form. After all, humanity is an end, not a means. So, the next time you find yourself crushing the rule or being in a dilemma where the rules seem to conflict with the personal values, remember to be flexible but stick to our principles. By embracing a mindset that is open to adaption, we can navigate the complex scope of the rules with confidence and integrity. Then look around and you'll see our living space under the rules is much broader than we thought. Thank you.